Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all doing great and today's video is also very special where we will try to understand what are some of the real time problems of DevOps engineers. Now many people might be following some courses, you might be doing the theory part but you fail to answer this question in interviews. And that's what happened with one of our subscribers where one of our subscriber asked this question, Abhishek, can you do a video on real time problems of DevOps engineers or how to answer this question in interviews? And that's when I decided that, okay, this is a very important question because I know most of you also have the same question. So I will make a dedicated video on this one. And here I am today. Uh, so if you also have some questions, you can also post them in the comment section and I'll definitely try to answer if it is important for larger group of audience or most of our subscribers. Now, coming to the topic for today, if you are giving a DevOps interview, there are two common questions that you should be definitely prepared for. One is your day-to-day -day activities. And the second thing is what is some problem uh, that you face in your job role or people can also ask uh, this in different way. Can you talk about a scenario uh, of a problem that you faced in your organization and how did you solve it? Different ways of asking, but this is one of the common questions, right? So watch the video till the end so that you understand how I approach to this problem. I'll I'll tell you uh, how I prepare for this uh, interview question and also using the chat GPT at the end of the video, I'll show you, let's say there is something that you haven't worked on completely. Let's say you haven't done any practical thing on Prometheus. You haven't done any practical thing on CICD, but still you want to be prepared for this question. Then chat GPT will be a savior. I'll show you how to use it as well. Okay. Coming to my experience. How do I approach this question? It's very simple. Like, if you do practical implementation on any specific tool, let's say you're working on Jenkins. Uh, we made a video on Jenkins called Ultimate CICD Pipeline, right? Or we also made, uh, I mean, we did a recent project on continuous integration on GitLab. So if you take the CI aspect altogether, let's say somebody is asking me, what is a problem that you're faced with respect to CI and how did you solve it? The quick thing that comes to my mind if you are doing the practical implementation is how do you store the secrets, right? So in our problem as well, in the example that we have done, if you haven't followed that videos, uh, you can follow the CICD related videos uh, by using the link in the description. So when we implemented that projects, you must have noticed that secret management was one of the biggest challenge. And that is how you even explain to the interviewers. Now your problem shouldn't be so big. I mean, it, does not have to be so big, right? Because in your job role, you might not have a lot of challenges, but there will be little challenges that you have definitely solved already. If you're working as a DevOps engineer, or if you're learning, then during the practical videos, you will come across these problems. Just keep them in mind and try to prepare them for the interviews. Like I told you, if you're talking about CICD, secret management can be one of your problems. And how did you solve it? Let's take again the basic example. Uh, we were doing GitLab CI, right? And where did I store the password related to the Sonar API? We use the GitLab uh, secrets. Uh, so in GitLab, in the CI CD, there is a variable section. We store the secrets there and we reference them. Let's say you are using AWS. Probably you're using AWS code build or something. Then you can say that we use these secrets in the AWS systems manager. Or let's say you're using uh, just any uh, Jenkins like platforms. Okay. So there are multiple ways Jenkins provides you uh, ways to store credentials. Then you can also store uh, Jenkins secrets in HashiCorp vault, right? So try to explain this in such way that uh, in my previous job organization, we had a lot of microservices and we need to store a lot of secrets and we have to reference those secrets in our pipelines. So to solve this problem, we have used HashiCorp vault where we store the secrets and we reference them in the Jenkins. That way we preserve the security. Initially we had this problem and I have solved this problem. Now let's say you don't know anything about HashiCorp Vault and Jenkins integration. Then that's where your chat GPT will come into your, I mean, your use, use or you can find a medium blocks, anything related to that. Or you can also ask me in the comment section. And if many people are asking for it, I'll definitely try to video, uh, do a video on it. So this is related to CACD. Let's say, Similarly, you want to express something related to Docker. Now I am trying to explain in my own way. How do I approach to this problem? How do I approach to this question? You can think of different ways. And if you have a better way, you can also tell our subscribers in the comment section so that everybody will learn this. So coming to this, like the Docker, let's say we did a practical project on Docker where we explained how to reduce the Docker image size by 800%. 
So that was a Go application. Let's say you are using Java application. You could probably reduce it by 50%, 100%, no matter what it is. What you can tell is in our organization, the Docker image size was very huge. And that was also concerning with respect to security of the Docker image. So what I have done is using the Docker multi-stage build and using the distroless images, we have not only reduced the size of the images, but we have also added security by removing the packages that are installed in the Docker images, where distroless images do that job for you, right? So this is problem regarding Docker and how did you solve it? So this is how you can answer or else let's say you're working with Docker and you want to frame a different thing uh, apart from the one that I told, then see what you are doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Let's say you're practicing. While practice, practicing, what was your problem? The Docker containers are running with root. Or, you know, what was your other problem? How did you solve it? If Docker containers are running with root, how did you modify them? Or let's say the Docker daemon itself is running with root. So we approach the problem using a different uh, tools like Builder and Podman. So unless you are not doing practicals, you will not able to understand and you will not able to answer this question because theory part, you might learn a lot, but only when you do practicals, you will understand the practical problems and you will try to approach to that. You will try to solve that. You will go through stack overflow. You will go through uh, LinkedIn. You will go through medium blogs and finally you will come to a use case, right? Even the ultimate CICD pipeline that we have done, Many people might have watched it, but very less people have done it. I have seen people posting on LinkedIn and definitely even though I have shared the entire things, they must have run into some problems and how did they solve them? By using all of these resources, they tried for some examples or they approached me on LinkedIn. Some people approached me. I tried to help them out. Some people said that the service YAML was not working. I tried to fix it. So that's how you practically solve that problem. And then let's take one more example, probably Kubernetes. So again with Kubernetes, you can say multiple things with Kubernetes. Like for example, uh, before you joining the organization, probably uh, your organization might be, might be using a lot of pods and uh, you know, there were these pods consuming a lot of resources and you have implemented resource requests and limits. I'm talking about a very simple things. I'm not going to the complicated topics because I just want everybody to understand how to answer this question. So what you have done is you have restricted the pods with resource requests and limits. So with that, what happened is the pod, which is consuming a lot of resources is now restricted with specific scope of resources. Now, if it still needs more resources, you can either approach your development team, ask them why it is taking a lot of resources. And that's how you discuss with your development team and you try to solve the problem with that pod. Or in Kubernetes, when you deployed your application, you notice that one of the application is going down or it is unresponsive and you don't know why. So how did you solve that problem? You went to your Kubernetes pod, you try to access the logs. Then if it's a Java application, you try to go into the application, take the thread dumps, heap dumps, analyze the dumps, sit with the development team and solve it. So right now in this video, I told real time problem with Kubernetes. How did you solve it? Docker, how did you solve it? CICD, Jenkins, GitLab, how do you solve that? Similarly, you can take a tool and you can think of it Terraform, for example, even I explained in one of our videos, let's say you are using Terraform. Now, previously there might be a team which is doing a lot of Terraform scripting, but they did not store the Terraform backend files in S3 bucket. So there was no way of versioning your Terraform scripts. And also there was no way of tracking the changes to your Terraform files, who is running the Terraform files and all right. Multiple people, multiple people might want to run it, but because there was no locking mechanism, then you were not able to use that. You were doing in different way. But after you join the organization, you have implemented the S3 bucket locking uh, mechanism using DynamoDB. So each and every tool, if you try to do the practical, it is very easy to solve this question. So that's why I say you that whenever you watch my videos, whenever you do the DevOps Zero to Hero practical playlist, one thing that you have to definitely do is practically do that thing. And when interviewer is asking you this question, it does not have to be so big. It can be very simple as well. Then you might, your interviewer might ask you one more question. Then you can tell him like, okay, so I did not get uh, that opportunity of dealing with very big problems. I have very little, uh, little experience with uh, DevOps and in my organization already, everything is stable. That does not matter, right? So at least try to explain the problem that you have solved. And if the interviewer is not convinced, then that's okay because you have tried your best. Now. Let's say 
you haven't followed my videos, you haven't done a DevOps Zero to Hero playlist, or you haven't done any practical implementation, but you still want to approach to this problem, then ChatGPT is a very good tool that can help you to solve this problem. Let's try to see how. Okay, now I have the uh, chat GPT logged in. So I use uh, chat GPT, uh, like, you know, uh, for uh, different purposes, you can also use chat GPT. There is no problem of using chat GPT as DevOps engineers or as any engineers. It is very good to improve the efficiency using the AI tools or whatever automation that is like, there is no problem at all. Now coming to this, uh, what I'll do is let's say I'm not aware of CICD at all. So I'll just come to chat GPT and ask it, can you tell me some real time problems that DevOps engineers run into while building CI CD pipelines. Okay. So sure. Uh, chat GPT throws you uh, some points. Like, you know, security concerns. Uh, this is, I think, exactly what we have discussed. The security aspect of the CI CD pipelines need to ensure that the pipeline is secure at every stage. Like you have to use better coding practices. You have to secure any sensitive information. Okay. There are some testing challenges. There are some scalability challenges. Let's say your pipelines grows. So depending upon your organization or depending upon the practicals that you have performed, you can take any example for here uh, from here. Let's say you want anything specific, uh, you can ask ChatGPT that as well. Uh, CI CD challenges with respect to secrets management. Okay. So let's say you want more detailed information. Again, you can get that information where it will explain you what are some of the challenges that DevOps engineers face with respect to secrets management. And while you understand the problem, you can also get the solution for it. The only thing that you need to understand is this, this is just a chat tool. So whatever you ask the question, it can respond to you as a chat bot. So what I'll do is I'll just say, can you explain how to solve the above problems? Okay. And this is exactly what you can tell your interviewer. Also, you can tell your interview, what are the problems and you can also tell your interview how to solve this problem. And this is the same thing I think that I've explained. Use a dedicated secrets management tool like HashiCorp Vault or AWS. Oh, surprisingly, it's exactly the same. And uh, trust me, I haven't <laughs> uh, searched for this one. You can uh, check my history as well. Just kidding. But yeah, uh, looks like uh, this is some of the common things that most of the DevOps engineers uh, do. So that's why, uh, you know, ChatGPT also gave you the same thing using HashiCorp Vault or AWS secret, uh, Secrets Management. This is how we have solved with the uh, solution, uh, right? The problem that you have stated to the interviewer. Let's take the same example with Docker. Then what are some of the challenges with Docker images in real time? Okay, so explain the same thing. Uh, that chat GPT gives you here and also take the answers from chat GPT, try to frame them according to your practical examples. Okay. According to your practical implementation. Now do not just take everything from here and try to put that because it differs from person to person differs from problem to problem and from your implementation to implementation. So that's why try to read everything from here and then depending upon your requirement, try to explain it in the same way to the interviewer and try to strict, uh, restrict yourself more to the job description so that your chances of getting selected will be much more, right? So this is how I, I also sometimes you use chat GPT and there is no problem in using any of the AI tools. As long as you are improving your efficiency, then that's good, but do not blindly trust everything that come that's, that's coming here because there can be some mistakes that chat GPT is also giving you and understand that chat GPT only has information till 2020 uh, or 2021. I don't remember exactly, but you know, you have to make sure that the information that you are telling to the interviewer also communicate the same thing. Like, you know, in one of my organizations or in the current organization and try to see if the information is correct. Let's say chat GPT says that, for example, uh, chat GPT says that the latest version of Jenkins is 
x dot y then do not exactly say the latest version of jenkins is x dot y verify your information so thank you so much for watching this video if you have any such questions uh, let's say in future you want me to make video on any specific thing like i've already done on how to explain your day-to-day -day activities today i uh, did a video on uh, what are the real-time problems that devops engineer face similarly if you have anything uh, you can ask me such questions and a future update so i think this is a very interesting update for many of you because you have watched the video till the end you get to uh, <laughs> yeah i mean uh, I think everybody will come to know. Uh, I'll make a community post as well. But because you are already watching the video till the end, I think you will be the first ones to know that I'm going to do a dedicated video on Argo CD. Many people are asking for it. And uh, due to some reasons, I couldn't do that before. Uh, reasons were different. One is I I think most of you know that I, I contribute to Argo CD. So I don't know how much I can talk about it. Is there any restrictions uh, with respect to my organization? So it took me a time. It took me some time and uh, now I'll make a dedicated video. It's kind of Argo CD crash course. And even if you have zero knowledge on uh, Argo CD or GitOps, don't worry. After watching that video, you will definitely master Argo CD, how to use it, at least how to use it and how to try to put that in your CI CD pipelines and explain during their interviews. Because many people uh, have seen that I used Argo CD in many examples and uh, they were not able to understand what Argo CD and GitOps is. Of course, they were able to do the same practical and use Argo CD and deploy to Kubernetes, but they don't understand the entire picture of it. So that's why I'm going to tell you that the next video is on Argo CD and it will be a crash course that will also complete our GitLab CD part because in the GitLab CD, that was the only pending part. I did not explain the deployment that will be also covered in the Argo CD. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video please try to share this video with your friends and devops engineers aspiring devops engineers and if you haven't subscribed to our channel please subscribe to our channel thank you so much i'll see you all in the next video take care bye